Two. Hey, hey, how you doing? It's me, Norman, and you. You got your good eye on the Norman Nardini Show. Oh, episode one. Hey, uh, we're glad to see you today. We've been running um, since last March, doing shows, alone shows. We had our last and 20th alone show, and on that show, we had a friend of ours, Harold Boom Boom Bottoms, came in, put a little pillow under my old ass, propped me up a little bit, give me a little, <laughs> breathed a little life into my old skin bag, and yeah, it was good. So, uh, hey, uh, it's a brand new year, 2021, so we decided I don't need to be alone anymore. Mind me being alone, I st start thinking about, you know, the first time uh, I masturbated. It's crazy because I was just cleaning that thing and it went off. What the hell? Uh, but I'm not alone anymore. So now, uh, you know, I have, I have a, an amazing sex life. I just need someone to share it with. <laughs> I'm killing me. Hey, let me hit you with a clean joke. Let me give you a joke I learned. <laughs> and Meanwhile, telling jokes ain't my uh, sweet spot. But here's a clean joke I learned from a priest. How? How do you make holy water? You know how? You boil the hell out of it. <laughs> Father John, give me that joke. My mother's priest, who was a very good guy. He was a human being first. And then he was a priest. Very good guy. And you know what? Him and my mom was like this here. They're like this here. Very close. She uh, she got to be good buddies with him. Hey, uh, the Norman Nardini show. You know, I was talking to my buddy the other day about what we're doing. And you know what he said to me? He said, dude, he says, you've always wanted your own TV show. He said, "You've always wanted it, and you were, you didn't never you always would reach out, and maybe it wasn't there, but you'd reach again, and it wasn't there. And then, terrible to say, everything went to shit. Everything shut down. Went to shit, shut down. So what am I gonna do? Sit there like this here? Mm -mm. You know what I'm gonna do?" I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to strap something on. I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to look some hunters in the eye. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm still Norman and it's still Friday night. And okay. I can't be at the starlight where I belong. I belong on the starlight stage. Flitting around like a little monkey. Smiling at all the girls. Blowing kisses to the ladies. Looking at the guys, giving fist pumping guys, throwing it down. I belong there. But societal situations precluded that. I don't even know if what I said made sense. Precluded that. Yeah, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm rolling people. But anyway, so we started the alone shows. We loved it. It was Tom and I together. Here at Eastside Sound, pouring a very hot shot. And now we're here together. And what did my buddy say? What I tell you, my buddy said, you always wanted your own TV show. Now I know this isn't a TV show, but it's a show. You know what I'm saying? But it's a show. And showing. And throwing are a couple of things I know a little bit about. You need your toilet plunged? I don't know about it. You need your brakes changed? I don't know. Need your pants taken up in the crotch? I don't know. You want to put on a show? <laughs> Do you want to put on a show? You want to put on a show? Call me. Call this. I was talking to a lady today at the store where I buy food. Colleen. Very nice. She's been there for years since since I uh, moved in the, back into my parents' house. 
And uh, I was talking to her today. I was telling her about the first time I went to Nashville. It was crazy. The first time I went to Nashville, I went down with the band that I was producing for a show to meet some record company people and to just uh, get this band started down there in the business. So I went to the club, and when I got to the club, I realized, I looked around the club, and I said, Jesus Christ. I said, I'm the only Italian-American in this room. You know, I'm from Pittsburgh. Played in Jersey, played in Cleveland. I'm used to being around some, you know, some blue bloods. But here I am, Nashville, Tennessee. A lot of people, everybody's younger than me. All white people. There was no Italians. And I and, and I told I told my friend, I, I said to Doron, I said, you should have seen it. I says, and I says, all these girls, I says, they're all eyeballing me. I says, they were all looking at me, because I was I, I was a hybrid. I was a, a, a Eastern European blue blood freak in their midst. And I could see him, and I, and I says to him, I says, and you know what was bothering me? I, I, I says, I'm thinking in my mind, I, says, I wish you girls would stop undressing me with your eyes. You're making me very uncomfortable. I'm killing me. Hey, I'm glad to see you. I really am. I couldn't be more glad to see you. It's a new year. We're going to be doing some new shit. And if we do right, if I do right, Tom does right. Our first guest today, Harold Boom Boom Bottoms. If we do right, we can help build the Norman Nardini show into something. And, and as things loosen up, you know, like whenever you get a pair of shorts and they're tight, but after you run around in them all day, bending and stretching and snapping them, they loosen up. And they hug your junk a little more gently. And that's what we want to do. We want to hug your junk. Just a little bit more what? Gently. <laughs> so, um, I don't. there is no master plan for what we're trying to do here. What we are doing today is working to entertain you. What we're going to do next time is to work to entertain you. Every other Friday night, 7 to 9 o'clock, our hearts are at the Starlight Lounge. And the soul of what we do is from what we did at the Starlight Lounge, which is bring the music to life. That's what I'm interested to do. And when I watch, other, I've seen them all. And I love watching other people work, and, and, and I've uh, been inspired by many great entertainers. But what I found, what I could do, that may be my contribution to rock and roll, is to make it come to life. A little bit of, add a little more, hum, put more humanity into the soup. And that's what we're trying to do here. And that's what we think working this way on the intranet we can add humanity and we can show other people who need to entertain but ain't got no club dates to get out and drag their ass across the boards. What we're doing here is an example of how other guys and ladies can get up in front of the camera and strut it. Let me see you go like this here. You think I'm afraid of that goddamn camera? You think I am? I ain't! That camera... Tom, that camera loves me. It loves who? Me. All right. Can I be a bigger a-hole? I'm excited. I got a shower. Shaved and shit, man. And you know what I did? I'll let you guys in on a little secret. You know what I did for every Norman Nordini alone show? Tom, I don't want you to get too excited when I say this, but just consider this, that every show we did, which numbered 20, for every one, I put on a brand new pair of silk underwear. Every one of those shows, I'm farting through silk. Here I am, like a, a goddamn aristocrat. <clears throat> oh, I'm not supposed to say goddamn. 
Uh, and you know who told me that? My friend Shades, because he wants me to be right. And I, I, and I appreciate that he wants me to be right. And I appreciate him and his beautiful wife, Deb. Um, I just needed to say hi to those guys. Hey, uh, maybe I'll play a song on the keys, and then we'll do some stuff. Harry Boom Boom's here. We're going to play. Uh, we, we we're going to do some of the songs that we did last uh, time we got together. We've got a couple new ones. We've got a brand new song I wrote uh, on December 22nd, 2020. On the way out. As we're kissing 2020 goodbye, the year that no one wants to see again, I had to write this song. And it, it's not a great one, but you know what? It's cool. I love when I write a song and say, it's not real good. That kind of like takes me off the hook, right? That way people, in, if I say, hey, it's the greatest song you ever heard, and, it, and then you hear it and it sucks. Well, I kind of buffered myself by saying, well, it's not... Some of the shit I write, when I write it, and this particular song I'm talking about, I try to write it with as few words as possible. Like I'll give myself these little tests. Do you guys ever do that? Do you ever give yourself tests to see if you can do something for no particular reason other than um, this is a test of the broadcasting system? How you doing? 2021, I'm a full grown man, and I'll bend you, and I'll send you. How you doing? Joints jumping, pimps and hoes, but there's something missing to your show, and ain't a party till you get here. When you arrive, everybody get turned up, the joint come alive, you make my blue disappear, and ain't a party till you get here, lights are low, bands playing, dress to kill, people swaying, but it ain't a party till you You know, your body dances. You know, when I teach, I teach classes at the college sometimes about, you know, dancing, but you're, then you dance different with your face. It's like a two-tone kind of thing. I don't know if you guys remember when I was teaching that class at the college, teaching women how a lady should enter a room. It's a special class. They put it together just because I knew something. These other sons of bitches didn't know. I knew. And what I knew was this. When a lady enters a room, I know how she should come in. 
and this is the way she should come in. When a lady enters a room, she, she should be on the other side of the door. And what she do? She take her leg and she kick the door open so that bangs, flips around and bangs against the wall. And then she comes busting and goes like this here. And she stands right by the door like this. And she waits for them sons of bitches to applaud. Because that's what they should do when she enters the goddamn room. What do you think? I told you I knew something. Hey, I'm starting to slobber and uh, sniff. <laughs> I guess I'm getting weird with you. Give me a second here. <laughs> let me get my let me get myself to get let me get myself together. Norman Nardini show. How do you like the sign of that? The Norman Nardini show. You know who would love the sign of that? My mother, Nori, Eleanor. Oh, what are you doing tonight, Nori? Oh, I'm staying watching my son, my son show, the Norman Nardini show. How much would she love that? I can, here's how much she'd love it. Too much. I had glasses. Oh, there they go. A couple of things I wanted to do today. I had a couple little one-liners I want to hit you with. I wanted to say this one. This was a good one. You know, I'm not quite as short as the Granati brothers. Nobody is. <laughs> Tom, goes, Tom, Tom don't say much, but when he does, he hits a home run. Nobody is. But check this out. Well, we were doing a show at uh, the old Syria Mosque. Beautiful facility. And in the back of, uh, b backstage of it was a staircase going up each side where the dressing rooms were uh, up from the stage on different levels. And going up the steps, there was a, uh, like a little landing before, well, when the steps were turning. And in that little landing against the wall was a little door that just sat against the wall. And I guess it's about this tall. And it's just a little door. That, I don't know what was behind it. But Nason saw that, and the Granati brothers were on the show with us, and he made a real nice sign, and the sign, he made a sign, and it said, Granati Brothers Dressing Room. <laughs> it's like, them sons of bitches loved that so much. They, they loved it more than we did. And you know what that tells me? Oh, heart. But I was saying, I'm so short uh, that my family tree is a bush. I'm so short that if I go gay, I can't come out of the closet. I have to come out of the cupboard. I wanted to make sure I got that one in today. I thought that was important as we build our new relationship on the Norman Nardini show. He has to come out of the cupboard. You know, he can't come out of the closet. I'm killing me over here. Um, let's read lyrics. Let's do one. I, I, I got to keep uh, up my habit of uh, on the alone shows. I started uh, reciting lyrics and reading lyrics. And I think it's a cool thing. And one of the th things I think is so cool about it is I don't see other folks doing it. And uh, and maybe what we can do is... Uh, and here's what, here's what I know. As a writer, when you read your shit out loud, you hear your shit. You know, when, when all your work is, you know, a lot of people write on their computers now. I, I still write with a pen and a pencil. And I write on the back of old envelopes. You know why? Because it makes me feel good. And all, an old envelope, like, like on the, I write, all my songs are written on the back of my gas bills and my phone bills. That's the way they're supposed to be. But anyway, but a lot of people like work, working on their um, computers and stuff. But when you read your shit, about about 10 years ago, I guess I was about 60 years old, late 50s, and I wanted to start writing better. I wanted to recommit myself in my life to writing high-level material. I wanted to write shit that was... I got to that stage in my life when I started thinking about leaving something behind. And I started thinking about, well, then I need to write better. I need to have to say more with less words. And so, and so what I started doing was training myself and teaching myself how to, to think better. So what I started doing was, when I liked a song, 
I'd write down the lyrics, no, a song that I didn't write. But if I liked the song, I'd, I'd write down the lyrics. So I'd look for the album, like the old album covers, where they had the words on the um, on the back of the album cover, and it was big enough you could actually read it. But anyway, and I started reading the words to great songs out loud to myself. And uh, and it was like discovering something, doing that. You know, it was like discovering, uh, and it didn't take long. As soon as I started doing it, and you know, and it started, as soon as I read the one song, as soon as I read the words out loud three times in a row, I started hearing and feeling and seeing what was happening with it so much better. And it's a great way to uh, get with the word. And um, it's cool, right? But anyway, this is the thing I wrote. I never wrote any music to it. And it's timely because of where we are in our society. And it has a trick in it. And really what the trick of the song is, I just mentioned a lot of people that I know in the song. Uh, just because I could. And because of uh, who they are and how they are is the way they get mentioned. And like I say, this, this subject is very uh, timely here at the beginning of 2021. We all joined flow on house arrest. <laughs> Harry been there for years. <laughs> Putting my marriage to the test. Realizing our worst fears. Why do he, why do he ain't left the shack? Says that he's high risk. And all the while this virus been shaking its fist. In this C-19, show is a mother. Killing more folks than this, that, and the other. Chasing down your sister and their brother. This C-19 sure is a mother. Goddamn C-19 blues. How about you? What a man po to do. What a man po to do. Dust Pan Annie and her old man been on strict lockdown. And Larry and Linda just disappeared since they got back to town. Moondogs frying Friday fish down at the starlight. Governor says, for your own good, keep your door locked up tight. Sorry about spitting on you. In this C-19 shore is a mother killing more folks than this, that, and the other. Chasing down your sister and your brother. This C-19 shore is a mother. Goddamn C-19 blues. How about you? What a man for to do. What a man for to do. Bobby B. out in Jersey. B. Foster down in Nash. Pimp Daddy, King of Cow Town. Ain't been making no cash. j Dog on the left coast says he got no fear. Lost his Midwest lady. And cried out all his tears. And this C-19 sure is a mother. Killing more folks than this, that, and the other. Chasing down your sister and your brother. This C-19 sure is a mother. Got them C-19 blues. How about you? What a man po to do. What a man po to do. What a man po to do. C-19 blues, y'all. Reading the lyrics out loud. It's a good thing to do. Hey, you know what? As, as we're in this pandem uh, pandemic, if I, uh, Norman Nardini's in a pandemic, it becomes a pandini. We're in a... Uh, a pandini. <laughs> Sometimes we get to, we put any on the end of every word on long truck rides. And sometimes Harry will get to any's and he'll just, everything he'll say will end in an any. And by the end of the truck ride, we want to kill each other. But that's normal. And healthy. That means, you know, the, the same thing's happening there as it's happening between me and my viewing audience right now. Because you folks out there that are watching the Norman Nardini show right now, I don't know you well. I don't know you all real well, but I already hate you like family. So, got that right? You're done with that. I thought you might be. Uh, <laughs> somebody said they love it when I tell stories. Let me tell you a story, and then um. I'm going to bring my friend Harold Gurley Bottoms up here. Uh, this is a great story. And it, the story is... The timeline of the story is the early 90s. Like right around 1990. 
And at the time I was playing with uh, myself, Harry Bottoms, Whitey Cooper, and I think uh, Johnny Lee was playing guitar with us. And we were playing at Frankie's every Sunday night. And every Sunday night was what? Party! Love those uh, Sunday nights when all the uh, people that work in the bars on Friday and Saturday night, that's their night to go out. And where you think they'd end up on a Sunday night. You know where they'd be? In my loving hands. I'd mold them. And I would caress them. And I would smack their little asses. Bang, 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 bang. And just to get them through a good Sunday night. You see what I'm saying? Put them on there. Give them their party wings. But anyway, we're playing there every Sunday night. And it's, this is going on for a couple years. And while we're playing there, this gentleman starts coming out on the brakes when we'd smoke a joint and want to get with us. And it was, it was like, is he cool? He's cool. So he was cool and then he started hanging out and then he, I started getting to know him better and he told me he was a cop. And I said, oh. And it was like, and it was like, okay. And it was, but he was, a, he wasn't saying he was, was a cop to tell me he was a cop. He was just saying that he was a cop just like he would have said he was a plumber. Uh, and we were hanging tight and we, me and him got to be great friends. And he loved to smoke grapefruit. And in the context of a gig on a Sunday night party, it was great. But then what happened is my studio's in Swissville. At that time I was in, uh, working out of the studio in, uh, across the tracks where Rocky and Vinny live now. Rocky owns that building now. Well, I'm hanging over there, cutting. I get a knock on the door. Who is it? It's my buddy, the cop. Only this time, he's in uniform with his gun and all his stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. And his, he's on duty. His car's out front, and he's got a partner sitting in the car. And he comes in, and he goes like this. Let's burn one. Let's burn one. I says, dude, I ain't burning one. I says, you're, I says, you're on duty. I says, you got it. Your partner right there. He's straight. He gonna smell you. And uh, he says, uh, let's smoke one. Let's smoke one. Let's smoke one. I says, dude, I can't. I says, it ain't right, right, right now. So I says, when you, as soon as when you're off duty, come back. We'll be. We're gonna be working all night, which we would. We'd work. You know, 12, 15 hours a day. And those we were young. We were beautiful. So anyway, he goes, no, no, let's smoke one right now. Let's smoke one right now. I says, I ain't doing it. And then when I put my hand up like this, he pulled his handcuffs off and he slapped the handcuff on my on my arm. And then he drags me across the control room to the big 200 pound door and handcuffs me to the door and walks out of the build, walks out of the room and leaves. Gets in his car with his partner and drives away. I'm handcuffed to a goddamn door. Sorry, shades. To a door. And I'm working. I'm in the middle of a session. So I'm standing over there like this. About 20 minutes. He comes back in. And he says, You ready to smoke one? No. I said, I am. I said, Can I have my arm back? I said, You want to smoke a joint? Let's sit down and smoke one. And that's what we did. But it was, what a great story, right? He handcuffed me to a door in my own building. And, and is there anyone out there that wants to say and makes to claim that Norman Nardini hasn't lived after that particular story? When you hear a story like that, you got to say, you know what? Some bitch is all right. Hey, uh, loving it, loving every minute of it. Remember that was a, a metal song, loving every minute of it, Tom? Who was that? Loving every minute of it. It was actually a pretty good record. Yeah, it was it was like the Scorpions or something like that. The Scorpions, they were pretty good. Uh, I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say, "Boom, boom!" I like to get my friend Harold Boom Boom Bottoms up to strap on his tool. You like the sound of that tool? There's a rock band named Tool. You know who that is, Tom? Yeah. You ever hear of him? I've heard him. You heard the music? Yeah. How is it? Like 
Nine Inch Nails in that kind of thing. Oh, it's real thing. hard. It's like industrial hard electronic. Oh, okay. Are they good? I guess so, if you like that stuff. If you like it. I'm not into real hard yeah. music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hooves together. Because <laughs> it would behoove you to put your hooves together for Harold Gurley Bottoms. You notice he's got an electric bass this week. Here on the Norman Nardini show, we're going to strap one on and uh, play a little bit for you. <laughs> and think, where the hell did I put my guitar? Oh, uh, let's think of it like this. Okay. So it's Friday night. It is Friday night. After work, you want to get a little something to eat. But before you get something to eat, you need to get a couple of pops in your belly, don't you? You know, you know, because you know how how would they say, it? "Don't ever spoil." I think Harold Bottoms wrote this in one of his books. Don't ever spoil twenty dollar a twenty dollar drunk with a two dollar meal. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So a lot of times, you know, you want to eat, but once you have a couple pops, you're like, "Hey, you know what? I'll eat tomorrow. I'm drinking dinner tonight." It's a good weight loss diet, actually. And it's also um, <laughs> we're talking about lifestyles. Do you know what I'm saying? It's about lifestyle. It's about, what, it's about what kind of hunter are you and how much you want to get out of your life. You want to get out. For hunters and munchers, don't be late for luncher. Uh, we're going to start off this week with a song I wrote back in the 1988-89. Turned uh, Glenn Pavone and Tom Valentine onto it. And they cut it and banged it around for years in every shithole in this goddamn time. So it's got some miles on it. It's got some mustard on it. I like to do it in a little bit of a lazy drag because I'm an old hunk of meat. And I'm in no hurry to do nothing no more. <laughs> What you down, you tow it apart. I hope y'all having fun. Look what you down. Look what you down. You're messing with me. Look what you down. You won't let me be. I hope y'all. Having fun, look what you've done. You come around here with your wild ideas. About to try pull me insane. If you keep on talking out of your head, she's gonna put me in my grave. Look what you've done. Look what you done, you tow it apart. I hope y'all having fun. Look what you done. I'm gonna play something here. Look what you done. 
I hope y'all having fun. Look what you've done. I hope y'all having fun. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. Well, well, well. Oh, look what you did. How you doing? It's a Friday night. We're not all rubbing up again one another physically, metaphysically. I don't even know what metaphysically means, but I said it. Physically, but we are rubbing up against each other through the power of the intranet. I'm humbled to be on a planet that has an intranet where people fly things to other people and they scream and things of this nature. Have you said hello to Harold Gurley Bottoms? Hello out there in television land. How you doing? You know, there's <laughs> there's a guy in Jersey. No, oh, excuse me. I just burped at him. There's a guy in, in New Jersey named Frankie who yeah. de-pantsed Harry during the middle of a song. I didn't get it. It's my birthday, wasn't it? I think it was your yeah. fabulous birthday. Very good. How phenomenal is this guy who depants Terry? He he lives, you know, he can never say that he didn't have a great accomplishment in his life. Yeah, that's true. He can never say that. He can yeah. never say that he did that he didn't touch greatness because he touched it. <laughs> he no, he touched greatness when he touched Terry's purple white piping pajamas, mm -hmm. dropped them to the floor. <laughs> For yeah. all to <laughs> view. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> what up? <laughs> now there were times when I thought I'd never make enough. And the times where they taught me Taught me to play rough And there's places that I've been I'll never go back to Cause there's things that I've done I'd never own up to And there's songs that I sung Should have never been wrote Times when I couldn't find the right notes But I drive all day then I sing all night to you hear me now? Cause there ain't nothing in this world that I'd rather do. Feel me now. Playing in a rock and roll band, it's all I ever knew. Being out on the road, it's just like being at home. Stands. Oh, that sounds like fun to me, boy, don't it? You know it, dude. Oh. I grew from a boy into a man Playing in a rock and roll band Now old guitars and amplifiers I like old friends who never let me down And every new song that I write It's our ticket out of town Man, there's nights I'll be out there Sick as a dog And that time in Buffalo We drove through the fog But we got where we was going And we really put on a show I guess you could say We really stormed Buffalo How about all the disappointments Every time we've tried To climb up on that ladder But it seemed as though we slide Right back to the bottom 
All we have left is our pride. And that just made us stronger. Cause there's this burning inside. Playing in a rock and roll band. It's all I ever knew. Being out on the road. It's just like being at home. Doing all those one night stands. Oh, that sounded like fun to me, boy. You know it, dude. I grew from a boy into a man Playing in a rock and roll band I grew from a boy into a man Playing in a rock and roll band Come on folks, let's give these guys a hand For playing in a rock and roll band Playing in a rock and roll band, baby. <clears throat> Strapping it on. Strutting out on the stage. Throwing it. Showing it. Eyeballing the ladies. Pointing at them. So, spitting on them. <laughs> I never spit on anyone. I've slobbered on quite a few. Never spit on anyone. If you knew me, you'd know. I couldn't spit on nobody. You know I'm just a little... I'm half a little monkey. You know what I mean? Come over here. I'll let you pick the fleas off of me. Hey, uh, Harry Bottoms on the base. I am the guinea with the goddamn skinny. Had a few numbers I thought Harry and I might perform for you. I got another one. I uh, wrote this on December 22nd, I think, or 23rd. One of those days... Right before the most sacred Christmas holiday, my old lady made a ham. Hmm. You know, my, 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 you remember what my mother said. What's that? My, my mother, she said, well, she said, you're such a ham, you should sleep between two slices of bread. <laughs> my mother said that. My mother knew. I told you about my mom. In our home, Every Friday, pasta vazo, beans and macaronis, the poor man's meal. You know why you ate it? It made you humble. It connected you with the earth. Beans and macaroni. That At the end of that meal, you knew you were the earth. You were the wind. <laughs> hey, I'm entertaining Harry's. I must be onto something here. Um, wrote this song for no goddamn reason. I didn't want to write it. And it ain't all that great a song, but what the hell's the difference, you know? Harry's gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna wash your hands. He's gonna wash his hands of me. It don't suck Jumping in a truck I got it out of pawn gonna strap it on It's gonna come to an end Hop around the bed But I don't want it to be over Rubbing up again Some of my best friends Breaking notes together Playing music tough with leather It's gonna come to an end Hop around the bed But I don't want it to be over over, ain't over, ain't over. Ain't over, ain't over, ain't over. Another roll in the clover for this here rover. It ain't over. No shame in my game. Gone up in flames. Everything I got, I earned Cause every show I play, I burn It's gonna come to an end Hop around a fan, but I don't want it to be over Folks I met Good as folks get Hang around the backs 
stage Ain't gonna write a new page That's gonna come to an end Hop around and bend But I don't want it to be over Ain't over, ain't over, ain't over Another row of the clover, but this here rover, it ain't over. strong staying on long reaching for the stars banging on a guitar that's gonna come to an end hop around a bend but I don't want it to be over ain't over ain't over ain't over Another row in the clover, but this here rover, it ain't over. Oh, well that thing's over, but that's a brand new uh, hunk of meat. Like I told you, it ain't a great one, but something about it rings true. Something about it feels good whenever we start to flapping down that groove. You know what? Something. You know what I'm playing at? It makes me feel like trash. <laughs> and, and there's, you can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on it. Hey, uh, man, I'm glad to be with all of you hunters. I'm even glad to be with the folks out there that are watching that I don't like. I'm glad to have you with me. And the, the fact that I don't like you, what the hell's the difference, right? None of that shit ever mattered anyway. Hey, uh, how many of you guys watching today <coughs> are fans of the Waltons? How many of you guys out there watching today, when you go to bed, you say to yourself, Good night, John boy. <laughs> I say it to myself every night. I... I go to meetings. I go to I go to three different meetings. Uh, Men who love the Waltons. I go every week for that. I only go every once or three months, every couple three months for a men who love whores. Uh, and then I go two times a week for men who love chihuahuas. You know, I go to the meetings and and they help me work out the shame. You know, you know what Rimmel. You know my friend Rimmel. You know what she told me? She said it takes a big man to walk a small dog. That bitch was right. That bitch was right. I'm telling you, she nailed that shit hard. It takes a big man to walk a small dog. Yeah, I used to, when I was young, I'd walk my bulldogs, you know. I'd be strutting around like I was really something. And I wasn't shit. But I'd be strutting around like I was somebody because my dog was somebody. But I've grown past that, and I've grown through. I've, you know, I've had a lot of bulldogs that I've, to all the bulldogs that I've loved before. <laughs> yeah. Who shit on my porch <laughs> and on my floor. Uh, Buster, come on, man. Buster was on uh, this old train album cover. Yeah. Buster was on Breakdown in Paradise album <laughs> cover. Blue. Blue. Never blue. Sure. She was phenomenal. Jack F. and McGee. Mm. I don't know if you guys remember Jack F. and McGee. Jack McGee was the only bulldog ever that wore eye makeup. Yeah, that's true. Every morning he'd wake up, he'd get in front of the mirror, and he'd put on his makeup. And he looked fantastic. 
he was really something, and he and I were very, very close. How about Weezer? How many years did we spend with Weezer? She was a people pleaser. <laughs> but now, I love a chihuahua. I'm struggling with it. And I know, you're struggling with me. Uh, let's play a song for my dad. Uh, send a set to my father, Arthur. Oh my God. My nephew is having a child. Uh oh, no. And they just found out it's a boy. Uh -oh. And they're naming this precious, wonderful child, Lincoln. All right. In honor of my father. That's cool. Whose name was Arthur Lincoln Nardini. And he was named Lincoln because he was born on Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Mm -hmm. How great was that? My grandfather loved Abraham Lincoln and he loved George Wash. He called George Washington George Wash. And then he would say to me, he would say, he said, hey Norm. He said, George Wash. He go, first Italian a president. <laughs> and I'd just sit there and I'd and I'd let that sink in. And then I'd say to him, I'd say, hey Pap, it's, he was Italian. He wasn't Italian, but he was the first president. He go, hey! He cut me off. He didn't want any bullshit. He wanted it to be said and heard clearly. George O. Wash, first Italian, a president. And that was that. I'm a product of that. I'm okay now. Well, of course, I am going to four different meetings a week. For a month, anyway. Hey, uh, a song from my dad. Totally working class guy. Totally tough guy. Went to work every day, six days a week. If you were allowed to work seven days a week, my mother would have let him work seven days a week. He would have worked seven days a week. Because he was only comfortable when he could smell the grease and the oil. And he could lay in it. And he could rub it on his, his hands. Were Come home, his hands were, were, he worked so hard, his hands were like, shit hooks like black shit hooks because they would just be covered with grease and oil and then he would fall asleep he, my dad didn't fall asleep my dad passed out and he would pass out on the couch and leave a stain because his hair would be covered with grease and oil and everywhere he slept there was these <laughs> black stains and we just thought it was the most normal thing in the world I didn't think anything of it and to this day I think it was the most perfect childhood any child could have to have a working class father who um, loved you enough to leave you alone, loved you enough to let you make your own goddamn mistakes, of which were many. <laughs> Are you ready to play this song? Hey, Harry knew my father. We're going to play this for him together. All right. It's nice to play a song for my father with someone that knew my father. Oh, yeah. And let's, sure. let's play it in and welcome in <clears throat> the new baby Lincoln. Ah, baby Lincoln. We like it over My here. sister's gonna fuss over this kid. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, she's gonna grandmother this baby. Oh, I feel sorry for this kid. One, <laughs> two, G, two. I ain't no better than my daddy was. Chip off that old block. From the simple way that he lived his life to the working class way he talked. Thought I knew better when I was a kid, but I was so wrong. Daddy let me make my own mistakes, standing by me all along. And my old man was a one of a kind, and I get a smile on my face every time it comes to mind. The kind of man he was, it's the kind of man I need to be. And this here apple didn't fall far from the tree. Things that my daddy knew the hard way, just like him. Like going to work, never giving up, and standing for something. Daddy said the devil dealing dirty dollar bills, and he's gonna try and buy your soul. And I give up chasing that buck. Daddy didn't raise no fool. And my old man, he wasn't one of a kind. 
And I get a smile on my face Every time it comes to mind The kind of man he was That's the kind of man I need to be This here apple Didn't fall far from the tree Sunday afternoon, steal a game I'd be hanging on every word he'd say Swearing at Bradshaw every time he threw it I was learning who I was And I didn't even know it Ain't no better than my daddy was And that's alright by me Daddy stood tall, never seen him fall And I'd get up off his knees Time goes by, I'm seeing him and me More and more for sure Grow up to be my father's son, right down to the core. A moment was a one of a kind, and I get a smile on my face every time it comes to mind. The kind of man he was, that's the kind of man I'm gonna be. And this here apple, this here apple, this here apple, didn't fall far from the tree. Far from the tree. Hey, Arturo! Here's a kiss for you. The new baby Lincoln. Unto this earth, a child is born. Hey, 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 I'm getting all biblical on you. Whoa! Because I'll come over there. He said biblical. He did. You try saying it. You think it's, say biblical. Seth, that's a hard word to say. You get a little drool going there. <laughs> you know that one of these, one of the things that these um, shows that we're doing will give us the opportunity, gives me the opportunity to prove to you people that I've been slobbering all along. It's not, uh, you know, it's not something I left in the past. It's, <laughs> it's who we are. Um, Harry's here. Oh, yeah. Gives me a chance to be a little bit of a somebody. Can I, could you let me be a somebody? Hey, Tom, we have anybody watching the show tonight? Uh, any hunters? Sixty any, people right now. There's a few. There's a few folks out there. There's to all you folks out there watching the show, what I'd like to do is I'd like to blow you guys a couple of kisses. And stay tuned because a little bit later in the show, I'm going to be giving everyone an all day. Rock and roll blessing. So don't take your blessed little heart anywhere. Stay here with myself, Thomas, and Harold. And um, let's uh, spend another hour or so together. And Hank, hey, uh, let's do a song. Uh, here's another one of these goddamn songs. I, I made it up. and I... A lot of times you start writing something for no particular reason. Not because you had an idea of what you wanted to accomplish. It just started, words just started falling together. And uh, and sometimes when words fall together, they fall together like this here. So happily. And then when that happens, then sometimes you can just hang on to that. And then you know what you do? Put a little rhythm underneath there. A little mel melody. And then maybe, maybe you got something that you can swing your meat to. Hey, what's in your meat wallet? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. And frankly, I shouldn't have axed. I said axed. You know why? Because <coughs> I'm cool. We did this on the last show. Uh, <coughs> a little thing called um, Game On. It's a song about great lies that we've been told. And the cool thing about no, doing this song is that I only wrote it a couple years ago and it's already outdated and I could rewrite the words with new events that happen but I don't think I should I think I should let it sit where it is and as time goes on it becomes <coughs> what I would like to call a, a timely piece <clears throat> a song that defines a moment in our what? Culture. I said timely and culture. Like I'm a professor or something, right? <laughs> Yo! Like I'm a professor. Are you kidding me? 
I'm street trash. Professor, I'll come over there. Get the hell out of here. I'm the guy that invented the dirty zipper trick. Don't forget. So don't let me bullshit you into thinking that I'm something other than what I am, which is a street carny. <laughs> which is a two-bit shithole bar musician. That's who I am. But you want to get in the jungle with it. You want to try and knock it off its high donkey from your high horse. You, yeah, you'll be on your high horse. I'll be on my high donkey, and you know what? I'm a nasty little samba bitch. You ain't gonna take me out with one swipe. You know what you're gonna have to do? You have to bring your uncle, your neighbor, your sister who's a biker. <laughs> bring her and hey, and tell her to bring a couple of her girlfriends. Because I might want to look them over. <laughs> Right? Uh, song about lies and shit of that nature. I don't believe that there is anyone that ever lived that hasn't told a lie. And I also don't believe there is anyone that has ever lived that hasn't been caught telling a lie. And what happens in life when you're young and you tell a lie and you get caught, that's a good thing because that's supposed to tell you to get right, to get with it and not put yourself in the position to be caught telling a lie. And you know how you do that? By not lying anymore. And if you don't learn that lesson, well, then you're effed up. The rest of your life, you have to deal with hiding from lies. Is it no good? You know, my grandpa Bernie would have said, Is it no good, Norm? Is it no good? Let's do one. I think you guys are going to like this one. Hey, and if, uh, if any of you girls are at home viewing our show, give me a little something. If this simple, very basic little groove feels good to you, get up out of your chair and move it around a little bit for me, would you? No, I mean, not, 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 you don't have to make a big show. No, no, no big whoop. Just, but, but if you're in your chair, stand up a little bit and just give me one of these a little bit. If this feels anywhere near, you know, right where it's, where it's supposed to feel. Because you know what, girls? I feel you. You know where I feel you? <laughs> I ain't going to tell you. Because I ain't no goddamn good. I can't stand myself. Ah, Jesus. Berg said, man, didn't know it was the juice. Man said, Berg, you went tell when the truth came on. said, Pete, you got to come clean. You've been betting on the big red machine game on. Game on. There's a light being lived. Something got to give game on. Jerry said, Joe, what I did to them kids wasn't right. Show sets all about the blue and the white game on. Game on. Well, there's a light being lived. Something gotta give. Playing that lies game. Are you doing out there? Get over here. with all y'all. <laughs> Build 
this here. Get with you. Johnny, glove don't fit. Johnny said to her, you must have quit game on. Game on, well, there's a light being lit. Something gotta give game on. The Donald said, I'm gonna build us a wall. Said El Trouble gonna pay for it all game on Game on There's a light being real Something gotta give game on Bill said he'll I know part of that mess He'll said Bill you left the proof on her dress game on Game on, well, there's a light being lived, something gotta give, playing that liar's game. in between that's what I'm talking about living loving feeling good feeling good matters if we can make ourselves have a good day we should do it and that's what these Friday nights are about you worked all week or you didn't you know you stayed home or you didn't but Friday night comes and I try sometimes to watch things that are on TV I do. I try to watch things that are on TV, and, and and I find myself saying to my old lady, you know, she understands TV better than I. She understands a lot of things better than I do, but she understands TV. But sometimes, like the other night, I said to her, I said, "Is there anything that a straight guy could watch?" And she just looked at me with a face like she wanted to throw me a slap. But is there, is there anything that we could watch together that a straight guy could watch? I don't know my. How about game on, right? Timely. As time's going on, it isn't as pertinent. But And I thought that that would bother me when I first put that shit together. And now I find that it doesn't because it tells me that it was two, three years ago. And that's cool. And time's going by so fast now. It's nice to be able to hang on to two or three years ago. When we were young, two or three years went by and society wasn't much different than it was two or three years before. Now, in the age of the effing intranet and speed and knowledge and all these things, <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good word, right? <laughs> right? That's, I, I, you know what? I got to the point. Knowledge. Knowledge. I like it. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Sometimes I amaze myself. Knowledge. It's a new time, you know. You know, young people. It seems normal to them, but to older bags of meat <laughs> that have been hanging in the freezer for more years, aged, that have been aged. Good beef. <laughs> it was good beef. <laughs> 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 
or not. Uh, but you, you know what I'm saying. All right. Uh, let's play another song here. Oh, uh, we played this one last time, and, and, and it really felt good. Huh. And it was a tribute to uh, one of our own. You know, one of our own. Um, Every area of our country has their own legends. Um, you know, um, the Ohio Valley, they had uh, Phil and Joe Necro from, I think they were from Belair, Ohio, which is right by Wheeling. And they were both legendary pitchers, ended up in the major leagues and had great careers. And, uh, they were legends. Bill Mazeroski is, le is our legend here in Pittsburgh. Also from West Virginia, Ohio. But he we he's our legend. Roberto Clemente, he's our legend uh, here in Pittsburgh. And to a lot of uh, Latin Americans all around the world, he's their legend. And... Um, Le legends are made by the people left behind. Legends are made by, by the memories and the respect that was had for a life. And uh, this song is one of those songs. And it's a song about a legend that we had here in Pittsburgh. An underground rock and roll legend who lived the life of a rock star on his own goddamn steam. Now that is an accomplishment. That is something to be um, to be remembered and something to be respected. You know, it, it, in a way, you know, I don't know that it relates to it, but just talking about it makes me think of. Uh, how just recently Major League Baseball decided to respect uh, the things that happened during the Negro League years mm -hmm. and the accomplishments of these guys mm -hmm. that weren't allowed to play. They weren't allowed to compete. What a rough time in America. Yeah, great what players. A, great what, players back in the days. Those teams and people. Great. Oh, yeah. great people and great players not allowed to compete. And, uh, and coming to terms with some things like that is... Uh, happening in the world today and which is a good thing and which is coming to terms from where we came from who we are where we going who we're going to be um uh, this particular song is about a musician that was uh one of us wow people he wasn't a pussyfooter he wasn't a you know let's do what we have to do he wasn't a uh let's learn all the hit songs and go out there and play and meet girls this guy was a guy that would strap it on and just start wailing. And white trash, redneck, uh, rock and roll people just, their faces would light up when he'd start ripping shit up. A legend. A legend by the name of Warren Kingfish King. He and I played together when we were young. I was his bass player. He always thought of me as his bass player. <laughs> I'm proud to say when I when I left the band and started my own career and had records traveled all over the you know all over the world in his mind I was still his bass player uh, I got no problem with that that's who I was to him and uh, because that means when, when I was his bass player we were doing world class shit as young guys right here on the streets Pittsville, Pennsylvania, and some people recognized it. And that, in my mind, is what started the local music scene here in Pittsburgh. Um, the local music did... Scenes don't start because everyone's real nice and trying to fit in and uh, doesn't want to offend anybody. Scenes start because shit's bubbling, shit's boiling, and somebody... Because the water got too goddamn hot, it's bubbling, it's smoking, it's boiling, it's coming over the sides. That's how shit starts. That's real. These things happen in the earth, 
and in society. And this is a song about a guy that could not be held down. This is a song about a guy that lived by his own rules for worse and for a little better. How about her? Oh! Young buck talked about him, said, did he stand that tall? Did he drop his pants in Texas as he raised up his last Paul, Tell me the story, how he blazed a trail. Hey, yeah, the man that caught a kingfish sure knew how to wear. Kingfish down in Memphis, drunk up all his dough guy. Elvis's phone number from a couple hoes. All them strippers tell you he get the wind in himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the man they call the kingfish. Shake the feathers of his tail. When folks still talk about that night on Woodstock app, threw his Les Paul out the window, landing on a Cadillac, played a killer show that night. I still remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the man they called a kingfish took it all out on his stride. Check this shit out here. Listen to me. Kingfish in New York City on the road to ruin. Down in a village doing shit you shouldn't be doing Then he'd strap on a six-string like a Didn't have a K Well mm -hmm. Took a bite of the Big Apple Middle finger in the air And hail to the kingfish Hail to the man Pissed into the wind Just because you can Hail to the kingfish and his rebel soul Dancing with the devil playing rock and roll Some say he played like Billy Gibbons made it Bring the mind to Wayne How about Johnny when I hot up on whiskey and coke Can't talk about the legend of the band that strang yeah, the man they call the kingfish Make that guitar sing Now there's been some guitar slingers And they all paid their dues But ain't a one of them better playing them Rock and blue And as a fact of a matter That ain't no fairy tale Yeah, the man they called a kingfish Sure knew how to well Hey, hey Yeah, the man they called a kingfish Shake the feathers of his tail Hell to the kingfish Yeah, yeah, well To the fish, y'all Come on, baby! You know what I'm talking about? The kingfish. You know, I was talking to Bill Wharton one time. The sauce boss. And the sauce boss says to me, we're backstage. I think I'm opening a show for him or something. And he didn't, wasn't speaking to me or no, none of my people. And I thought, look at this same effort here. And I went over to him and I says to him, uh, hey, Bill, uh, I heard my old friend uh, Warren King play with you. And he went, Warren King! And he just went off. <laughs> and he just started talking. He just and, and one of the first things he said was, you know, the sound that came out of his guitar was the sound that I always heard in my head that I could never make. He, he, the way he plays guitar is kind of like what I always want to hear. And that's what he said. And it was just like, you know what it was? Confirmation. Confirmation from a guy from another city, another scene, another, you know, he was just, Bill Warden's definitely more in the straight up blue scene than I ever was. And he knew. Well, he knew. And, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Two words. He knew. Hey, uh, I don't know if y'all got a, Old lady, that's a good. 
I know a lot of you do. Because I know a lot of you old ladies. And a lot of them is uh, two syllables. Sweet. Sweet! I got me one of those. Hillbilly. Brought her back from West Virginia in a wheelbarrow. In 1975. What were you doing in 1975? Sucking on a nipple. That's what you were doing. I was only dragging my ass across the boards. Being somebody. Woofing at the girls. I thought I was young. They dressed me up with some shiny clothes and shit. God damn, I thought I was bringing it. Hey, um, speaking of old ladies... Let's do a song for my old lady. She didn't feel good today. Uh, and she's out of sight. She's out of sight. I, I, you know, I told a joke where I said, you know, the old lady Hall of Fame called my house and wanted to talk to her because they want to induct her and have a big ceremony to put her in the old lady Hall of Fame. And the joke is the reason they want to do that is because she's put up with me for 45 years. And all I can say, that's a pretty good joke. I ain't gonna argue with that whole uh, state of mind. So let's play a song, send it out to Kathy Jean, the Hillbilly Queen. Hope she feels better tonight. Uh, I got a guitar over here somewhere. Oh, uh, yes. You're putting stuff in different places. Too. I know. <laughs> we moved like, a couple things around. Me all. Then he forgets where he put them. That's right. Tom, uh, Thomas, I think Tom's starting to figure out I'm a bit of a goofball. <laughs> but uh, wrote this probably about 1989, and we did it for about four or five years. And then, it, like a lot of songs, when guys go away, things change, and such, you know the circumstances go. Sometimes you know what happens to a song. What well, gets lost? And this one got lost for years, and then a few years ago I brought it back and uh, polished it up a little bit rewrote the bridge and and then you know what I did I listened to it and I thought how can I show this piece of music more respect and you musicians out there that are writing songs and trying to do your own goddamn things a great question to ask yourself is how can I show more respect to the music that I'm presenting and another great question. How can I show more respect to the audience and uh, have more respect for my relationship with the audience so that, you know what? We can have a wang, dang, diddle. Yeah! Because I'm coming over there. I'm smacking you right on the shit can. That's one. I love that term, shit can. It's a term that I throw around a lot. I don't know who I heard say it first. I might have made it up. I'm starting a rumor right there. Hey, did you ever hear the song by Delmer McClinton? I'm starting a rumor about you and me. Did you ever hear it, Tom? Yeah. That shit's killer. Yeah. Delbert done a couple things right along the way. He done a couple things right. And Texas treated him right. A life well lived and a life and music that grew and had had a family, had, had a musical family listening to it all the years of Delbert's career. What, what a great uh, American story, Delbert. Is. And what a great name, by the way, Delbert. Are you effing kidding me? Texas doesn't like sharing those guys. With the rest of the country. I like the way Tom talks. <laughs> you know? yeah. I love Robert it. Earl Keane. Right. He like never plays outside of Texas. Jimmy yeah. Vaughn. Yeah. 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 All the way back to uh, <clears throat> who was it? How not Hound Dog Taylor, uh another guy. <laughs> that swing guitar player from the late forties and early fifties. You know what I mean? I can't remember his name. It'll come to me. Uh, a song for the Hillbilly Queen. One, two, G, two. I don't 
Don't say the things I wish I would say Don't have the wings To carry you away I don't make that much And I'm not big and strong With the time I'm out of touch By most things I'm wrong But you know my heart It's tried and true And I'll always be The man I know I've tried to be like I should But I got this wild side I'd change if I could I'd chase down my dreams And go up in flames Then the smoke clear And you remain The test of time This love in my heart Like an ember it glows Like a fire it burns Like a river it flows So deep and so wide Honest and true so proud to be the man who loves you. I always be the man who loves you.
loves who? You! Because I'll come right over them. Look that for my own little. The man who loves you. You know, I said that the other day. I just wish I was more of a man. <laughs> but I guess a lot of us do. There was one thing I wanted to do. Well, you got half an hour to do it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess... I guess, well, I guess I caught your attention. So. <laughs> I guess Tom told me. Uh, oh, we've got a half an hour. Uh, great. Uh, I was going to have Harry sit down, but what the hell's the difference? Uh, what I'd like to do, I, my friend John, he mentioned to, to me today on Facebook, he said, tonight. Tonight. Tonight's the night. Is it possible? Norman. He said, Norman, is it possible that tonight there could be a rock and roll absolution. <laughs> Could we have a rock and roll blessing for all the hunters, munchers, late for lunchers, parolees, old convicts, <laughs> old whores? My friend, my friend Bobby, one time he says to me, he says, he said, you like old whores, don't you? I was like, what? You like old whores, don't you? And it's like he assumed that, well, of course I do, because why? Because who doesn't, right? You kidding me? Tom does. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give everybody that's watching and everybody that isn't watching, because everybody that isn't watching is important to me. Because what I want to do is, if I can organize us and get some more of us watching, and get more people involved in what we're doing and send a lot to hunters and munchers everywhere, well, we can build what we're doing. How much fun, how much fun would it be if I could have just sang that song, The Man Who Loves You, to my old lady with some kicking drums and boom, boom over here playing through an amp that got a little in its pants. And how about if I had a hunter like Larry Seifers playing some Ham and Mogan <laughs> behind? And how about if I had a couple of background singers? Oh, you know what I mean? A couple of opera singers. They'd have to be Italian. <laughs> Tom's getting smarter. Every, you know, there must. Yeah, he's Tom's really talking smart. And the background singers. Well, they'd have to be Italian. I mean, he's just talking <laughs> smart. I don't know how, where he got educated, but whoever, you know, he comes from good people. Tom. Oh, yeah. And now, the, the longer I get to know him, the more I'm seeing the evidence of that. Good stock, good stock. Good effing stock. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to give all the hunters, munchers, late for lunchers, everybody out there, and they're old ladies, mm -hmm. and they're chillins. Chillin', chillin'. An all-day rock and roll blessing. And at the end of the blessing... I'm going to blow a couple kisses so that you guys that are uh, so straight, so goddamn straight that a man blowing kisses offends you, when I take my hands apart, look away, because I am going to blow some kisses. I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Put your base up over your face. <laughs> I can see what I, I know can happen. Here. Okay. Right now. I'd like to wish y'all a wonderful 2021. And I'd like to flush 2020. Thunder goddamn shit pot. And I'd like to say, may the monkey of love light up your life. And now I'll blow these wonderful, wonderful kisses. I'm going to blow a couple doubles. Singles. Hey, I'm the guy that invented the blowing of the kisses that happens on the golf course. At the, event of big, at the end of every big tournament now, they have a guy that rides around, they strap him in a cart like he's a golf bag. That his job is to ride around the golf course and the last golfer's on a 
on a course he blows him kisses as the tournament is winding down. It's a ceremony that Moondog and I develop. So uh, don't think I haven't made contributions to society, because I have. But that was our rock and roll blessing. And I'd like to send it out to John, who haunts my life. He's constantly doing what? Breaking my rocks! But I kind of like that. I kind of need it. Um, I have that many other things that I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about being handcuffed by the police in my own studio. You don't make stories like that up. You don't make them up. Uh, let's do an old song. What the fuck is going on here? An old one. Hmm? You know this one, Harold. Hello, guitar. You know, a lot of people that see this guitar always say that they think it's cool. I like playing it. It's, it's a Mexican-made Martin. And it was given to me by a wonderful friend who passed on a couple years ago, Jay Flores. He was a road manager for the House Rockers. And never when we would do dates together, when I was in the Diamonds or the Tigers, and he was working with those guys, he always knew. He knew. He always said. You know, the name of the band I work for might be the House Rockers, but the guys that rock the house, well, Norman, that's you and your cronies. <laughs> Ready? I thought I was a geezer. Am I a crony? <laughs> geezer! Please, ah. <laughs> you boom, boom. Let's go boom, boom on our Ready Fred do. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Have you read it? Read it, read it. The fourth time of rock and roll. Have you read it? Read it, read it. What are you waiting for? She got you looked down right and it's out of sight, out of control. Set, go and go. Ready, set, go and go. Ready, set. 
set, go man, go, ready, set, go man, go! I'm the boy, I'm the hoodoo boy from the east side of Pittsfield. They call me Little Big Mouth. I love that one. They call me the dangerous stranger. <laughs> How do you like that kind of talk? The dangerous stranger. I got a song called The Danger Dangerous Stranger from Getting, mixing up for the new uh, Diamonds album. Who's that dangerous stranger coming to your town? Always looking for the danger. I'm the stranger and I just can't settle down. Frank Zori singing the living crap out of it. Beadman on the drums. You want to talk about the thing I miss most. The thing I miss most in this in this new times of the world is when when people use drummers to make records, drummers had a feel. When Charlie Watts played his Charlie Watts beat, mm -hmm. yeah. it was Charlie Watts, and it felt when Ringo played. Ringo did what Ringo did, and it was orchestral and it was musical and it was a great word both of those drummers a great word to use what they did was and the great word would be simple but it was about the way simple felt and left space and laid where the the bed that the others could lay what they did on top of how delicious was that there was a bed to lay on because that drummer held that groove. And then band leaders would find bass players that complemented the way that drummer played. And producers would get bass players to play into the way those drummers felt. And rock and roll music became the music of the world and helped change society and culture. Because they'll come over there. You think that camera don't like me? Think again. That son of a bitch likes me. Uh, uh, Harold, I'm going to play a song on the piano. It's your thing. And then we'll do a couple at the end. Let's do a song. I'm going to do one. Uh, it isn't really a piano. It's like more of a keyboard. I When I try to play piano, you know what I sound like? Terrible. And you know why that is? Because there's a lot of people that are taking playing the piano to an art. And I hate to diss what they've accomplished with my arthritic old effed up hands. But let's play a song. Wrote this uh, in the last year or two. And um, I'd like to send it out to uh, all the magicians. Ventriloquists. Comedians. Everyone that ever gone on a stage and said, I'm going to do these things to entertain others. Can you picture being a goddamn ventriloquist and getting up on stage in a room full of drunken Americans. What kind of balls got to be in your shorts for you to do that? What kind of balls got to be in your pants for you to get up and do magic tricks for drunken Americans? Are you kidding me? I think I got balls in my shorts doing what I do. But I ain't even a man when you compare what I do to what magicians and ventriloquists do. Let's just say these guys are carrying the cross up the hill. 
When was the last time they got any goddamn respect? No one even knows. No one. There's nowhere to check. How do you check? There is no place to check because you know why it never happened. Until when? The Norman Nardini Show. You know what he did? He grabbed a shovel full of respect. And he shoved it on the grave of every goddamn ventriloquist and, mag and magician. Whoever got a laugh. Whoever got a round of applause. All right? A simple round of Can I have a round of applause out of what? Respect! Sorry. You know, Tom, Harry's a great audience over there. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have to get him a goddamn muzzle. <laughs> because as much as he's heard every one of these lines before, he still laughs at my shit. Keep him around. My, but get him a muzzle. <laughs> and when I talk about growing the show, just think how great it could be. How much fun we could have if we could grow this show and to having a couple of musicians up here, a couple pros, a couple hunters know my shtick, know my material, and also bring what they bring. Beyond my simple requirements, they have other things to take an offer that we could all enjoy. And then guess what else we could do? If we can grow this goddamn thing, we could put some hunters out over here. We got a lot of room. We could put 20. 20 hunters. 20 hunters, maybe a couple munchers, well, you know, one or two late for lunchers because, you know, they'll, they'll be here, but they'll be late. So, so, and you put them over here and then we work to them. And then, that, that, you know what I, you know what I do to them hunters and munchers? Tom, I throw some face at them like this here. And you know what they do? They applaud. They go, there he is. Look at Norman, that little goddamn Italian monkey. Hamming it up. I, I, did I say I was going to play this song? Tom? Yeah, you did about five minutes ago. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Time flies. I got a request to do this one. I also got a request to do another song that we don't do well as a duo, but we might do it anyway. <laughs> Harry, as soon as the song is over, remind me about the song that I wanted to do that we not, might not do. Don't listen to what I just said. Never do. Can Never you do, do that? <laughs> Can you ignore just, just what not, I just said? Please. Just not smile. Yes. <laughs> Tom, please ignore what I just said to him. It works. It works for me for thirty years. Are you smile. ready for this? <laughs> I'm starting to feel so good. I might pull. I'm tucking my shirt. You know what? What the hell? I'm gonna talk. You I'm know what? Tuck your shirt. Oh yeah. Now my gut can breathe. Because <laughs> I'll come right in. <laughs> Remember when I weighed 126 pounds? Jesus Christ, I'd come in a room all tight. Oh, it's so sweet. Look in the mirror. What do I see? Face of a clown looking at me. Ain't good for much, more than a laugh. Jokes that have cracked, you don't know the half. But you can tell the ringmaster that I'm in town. That I'm looking for a circus, looking for a clown. Kind of work, it's hard to find. Barnum and Bailey come to mind. If they're looking for oh, a man that's funny, I'll be under the big top making my money. That's the way I see it going down. And I'm looking for a circus, looking for a clown. Like me, been everywhere that day is. Jersey Shore, nothing but smile in the roadhouse. 
They roll in the hour, you can talk to my agent and they'll set you straight, tell you I was climbing right out of the gate. Aim to please God and need to amuse just to hear. Take away your blues and you can bet your sweet ass. I've been around and I'm looking for a circus. Looking for a circus. Looking for a circus. Looking for a clown. Sent that out to all the ventriloquists and magicians who have just been brutalized by society. These people, they want to, they're there to simply what? Entertain. To entertain is an honor. So. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Hey, uh, let's play a couple songs and uh, we'll get the hell out of here. I can see Tom's thinking we're... Uh, well, how much time we got left, Tom? Nine minutes. Nine effing minutes. Nine minutes. Nine minutes together. Nine minutes. You know, nine minutes, you know what I would call nine minutes? Nine minutes is... Uh, One-sixth of the time a man needs for foreplay to heat up dinner he needs a good hour so you got nine ten minutes that's one sixth of the time that a man needs to just gently and reverently and ever so manfully <laughs> use his gentleness and kindful manner to make things well nice we got a couple songs to play. I got some things. We got more songs to play than I. Uh, we got a mess them. Okay, let's try this one. Uh -oh. Like Tom says, I'm putting things in different places. We're gonna get a Norman Nardini show sign. Uh, soon enough. I ain't saying we'll have it here next show. Right. But we're gonna get one. Right there. Okay. We're gonna play a song that Harry doesn't know. So he'll probably stand a little bit closer over here so he can watch me work. Stand and it's, it's I like to send, it's a chick that you know. Uh-oh. Tom knows. I know. All of us know that grew up through the 60s and 70s and 80s. We all know this girl. We've all probably fallen in love with her for 20 minutes at least. Uh, and it's a song about her. She's a fictional person that we all love. And uh, the name of her song is... All she wants to hear was the blues, baby. I can see her in my mind right now. I know 10 girls, 100 girls that I can think of on the dance floor when this song would ring true to me. I'd like to send that out to a girl that I knew when I was young in the very early 1970s. I, I never really knew her that well. I just She would hang out with my buddies and stuff, and her name was Square Business. And I'd like to send this song out to a chick I used to know named Square Bennett. Because okay. any chick named Square Bennett is a friend of mine and a friend of yours. One, two, A. How many songs got this groove, right? How many great ones? We might have another one. She had man, plenty of them, but things never seemed to work out. She had a woman one time, back in college, where she was living wild. She might have had a threesome or two. Now all she wants to hear is the blues. She had money, lots of a when she Married up with that man. He had a woman that he kept on the side. That him and that bitch 
just stuff and ran to phone and money went him too. Now all she wanted he was a blue. Yeah. Yeah, the band is moaning, the saxophone moaning. Makes it feel alright. Hit the chime on other rhyming is so sublime. To keep her on the phone all night. She find religion for a minute and she find something else. Well, it come in a bottle, all water glass, and it ain't no goddamn good for your health. After she's had a few, all she wants to hear is the blues. Play one. spoken word part. She had a daughter, looked just like her. You should see that girl dance. When she get out on the floor, ain't none of them young fellas even stands a chance. Cause when she put on her dancing shoes, all she wants to hear is the blues. Yeah, the fool and the show saxophone blowing make her feel all right I'm on the side and she's more than I keep her on the floor all night and all she wants to hear just like her mother dear all she wants to hear is the blues hear the blues you know her I know her you probably used to go out with her Oh, you lived with her for a couple of months back in 77? I bet you did. I bet she was hard to handle. In a good way. <laughs> uh, I don't think we have more than time, more than enough time to do one particular number. And I have the perfect song for that. It's in uh, the key of G. And I'd like to send it out to everyone who's feeling down from the Pandini that we're all going through in our country. But my Norman people, they're in a more of a Pandini than a pandemic. And, um, and what we're here to do is blow up your skirt. <coughs> we, want, we want to shine a light on it, <laughs> on what you got. Uh, you can look for us every couple weeks. We're here. Tom's here. Harry's here today. I think we're, we're going to be seeing some more of this guy. Um, and you know what he's been doing? Propping up my old ass and giving me a chance to what? Shake a monkey. How you like when you see it? Here. Ah, when I start like this here. A little monkey shake. You know, it, it's all good, baby. It's all goddamn good. <laughs> when I saw you, I saw the world come alive. Saw the cloud come up and take the clouds from the sky when I saw you. Saw the flowers in the spring. And all the colors autumn will bring. And I was blind till I saw you. I never knew the sky was blue. Never saw the sun shine through. I was blind till I saw you. When I saw you. I saw a river rolling by. I saw you, saw a mountain high when I saw you. I saw a forest evergreen, saw a meadow blowing in the breeze. And I was blind till I saw you. I never knew the sky was blue. And I never saw the sun shine through. I was blind. Till I saw you I never saw a rainbow Never saw a part of gold But the first time I saw you 
saw those colors and oh, when I saw you, I saw an eagle soaring high. I saw you, I saw a butterfly when I saw you. I saw a waterfall. When I saw you, I saw the writing on the wall. And I was blind till I saw you. Never knew the sky was blue. Never saw the sunshine true. I was blind till I saw you. I was blind till I saw you. I never knew the sky was blue. And I never saw the sunshine through. I was blind till I saw you. This is the part of the show when I blow a kiss. <laughs>